Hello friends, hope you're all doing great. Welcome to today's video where we're going to dive into more theories and rumors in regards to Scarlet and Violet. In our last video, we covered a bunch of really interesting things in regards to potentially the new concept Mega Evolutions coming back and also a few other things that Ku had been dropping in regards to the object mon in this lead up to the release of Scarlet and Violet later this year. So we're going to continue it today. There's been a bunch of really interesting things coming out for us to discuss in this video. And some of the things we might be finding out pretty soon so hopefully if things come to fruition we do but without further ado let's dive into it so to first kick us off there's been a lot of discussion recently over on twitter and in the community in regards to the box art logos so you can see here we've got the box art logos now and you can see around the the scarlet and violet we now have these borders here both kind of depicting the respective legendary on the casing, but there's four symbols on each corner of these borders, and there's been some amazing theories here about what these represent. First off, we're going to have a look over at Soul Silver Art. So Soul Silver Art, one of the best probably leak analysts, rumor analysts that we've got in the community, put some amazing theories together in regards to things that are leaked or rumored. So we can see here, uh, this thread is all about the symbols that we've got around the borders here for this box art. Uh, some people know this info, but some don't fully understand what I believe it's saying. The Scarlet and Violet legendaries will literally transform into five different forms, vehicles, not just drop onto the ground and only become motorcycles. Look at what Ku said about the box art and look at them closely. So this goes back to a post that Ku had put out. Uh, it was a little bonus riddle that he kind of posted a while ago. Uh, bonus two, they may look different on box because they both have uh, Chinese, Chinese, uh, uh, you've just seen one of them. This translates into five forms. So bonus are they may look different on box because they both have five forms. You've just seen one of them. So we've only seen one form of them, which is their kind of original form, which is their main form, the theory goes. So this is what form we've seen. But according to Q, they transform into four other forms. So they have five forms in total. We can go down this thread here. Uh, so Silva, look at the box art. Ku said they look different on the box because they each have five forms. And this is just one of them. The one we see on the box is the standard non-riding form. Then the other four will be for riding. This is all hinted at in the border around the title box art. So if we go down a little bit, you can see here we've got some nice pictures from Soul Silver kind of depicting what he's referring to here. So the, the four symbols around the box art, the head in the middle represents their original form. Um, and the big thing that I would say from this box art that I get from it is it lines up perfectly because you've got the head of the dragon in the middle and the head of the Pokemon. And then you've got around the side, you've got these kind of wheel arches around the first top corners, which kind of depicts the specific Pokemon. If you look at Coriodon here, they've got the wheel around the, the kind of underneath of the chin and it has spikes on it, which is depicted on these spikes here. And then you've got kind of the, the I guess, what would be arms and then a tail here with the kind of spikes on the tail at the bottom. So it kind of makes up the entire dragon. So these, symbols linking into this border which depicts its body make complete sense the same can be said with Meridon, uh, where you've got kind of the lightning bolts here for the head um, and then you've got the more smooth kind of circle stomach or whatever it is chest here which is kind of depicted in the picture and then the rest of it's made up like it so that's just my kind of take on that but it makes complete sense so you've got soul silver kind of pointing out what they are here and then we can take a, a bit of a closer look at the um the actual borders here if i take my camera off you'll be able to see all of the the symbols here on this one and the same can be seen for scarlet as well so they both have the same symbols they're just depicted differently because of the respective pokemon that they are this border shows the symbols of all the forms the fifth the middle dragon head which we have went through is the same as we see in the box art the other four in the corner seem to symbolize other things one looks like a wheel another looks like it's going under a wave the rest are hard to figure out but 
Flying and climbing makes sense, like Pocoso speculated here. Please give their tweet a look over. It will help make it click. So here we go over to Pocoso, who's another very good leak rumor analyst and has some amazing stuff. Definitely follow these people if you are interested in the theories and things being broken down to make sense in regards to what has been leaked or rumored. Uh, so Pocoso goes on to say, uh, being worn on the trailer, the normal form, with which uh, other f the four forms are we missing? Uh, these symbols on the corners are the lo of the logos are mountain, climbing form, which makes sense, wheel spinning, motorcycle form, which has already been kind of, I guess, theoried, rumored, uh, a battling form, but normal form, uh, and wind water form for kind of getting around like this. And this goes on again to something that Soul Silver put out again to kind of back this up even further start with us flying then goes down into the crevice for riding then into the water for surfing then climb the mountain to the reveal for climbing my big theory for this uh, is like breath of the wild uh, or another open world rpgs we will get the legendaries early on in this game which will get backed up again further so this is talking about the the trailer where we got these legendaries revealed you've got where we started the trailer in the sky for representation of flying and then you've got kind of the i guess when you're traveling through the the terrain like you're riding on something and then you've got surfing on the sea and then you've got climbing up the rock face and then you get the reveal of the legendary so it's all combined in there and makes a lot of sense and really lines up with what these symbols can kind of possibly mean this is then backed up even further by another post here. We go back to a post that we looked at in our last video. This is the Oshawott leak on 4chan. Leak, rumor, whether it's true or not, take with a pinch of salt. But they do go on to say Coriodon and Miradon are not part of the main gimmick gameplay wise and you get them early on. So that makes sense. If we get them early on, the ride Pokemon, that would make a lot of sense to get them early not to use as legendaries in battle because that would make things far too easy and i don't think that's the point of these games but getting them as a kind of ride pokemon partner pokemon early on makes sense to me at least the law has them evolved from a baby dragon named persicapo you get persicapo as a second starter and vent early on involving a shattered time crystal has them evolve into their respective cover versions which i guess could work uh, they are your PLA ride Pokemon all in one. So like everything from Pokemon Legends Arceus all combined into one Pokemon. That's what you use to ride around on. Uh, Coridon's wheel is Vestigal. Uh, you ride on, uh, you ride on his back, but he uses his legs. He swims and climbs as well. He puffs up his neck wheel to fly like Braviary. And Miradon has jets and hovers over the water and doesn't climb with its limbs. That makes a lot of sense for what everyone's kind of theorizing especially soul silver's um kind of theory on this and pocoso's as well and this is kind of backed up again if we go over to another theorist uh light gacha light underscore gacha who uh, is a spanish resident come out with some really interesting points on these symbols as well so you can see what they are representing here so the earth and mountains is this symbol which is the one in the top left hand corner so that that would kind of be representation of climbing and then you've got uh this one here which is movement is a change of position so this is the top left hand corner symbol uh change of position or place of someone or something it is also the state in which the body is while changing positions it also used to refer to other concepts such as animation circulation and traffic so that would be the kind of i guess the ride on motorcycle theory so for movement uh, we've got this symbol here uh, this is the bottom right hand corner symbol uh, water and air symbols on the other hand the compass follows the circle that symbolizes the limits of a person's movement it represents the limit between humanity and eternity so also can mean that you're going to surf over the water as well movement over water uh, or navigation over water if you're kind of bringing the compass element into it as well and then you've got this hexagon uh, in symbology represents the perpetual movement of creation uh, something like the path followed by permanent renewal process through transformation and change this hint represents that legendaries can change into forms which makes a lot of sense and this is the bottom left hand symbol there which we do see on these logos so all kind of tying in to them having five forms 
does make sense. I really like the idea of this and the idea of getting these legendaries early, I think has been something that we've talked about before. And there are a lot of points, kind of different theories from different people pointing in the same direction. A lot of theories making a lot of sense on this. Getting back to the hexagon shape here that Light put out in his tweet, um, it's very reminiscent of the, the the star symbol that we've seen in the Japanese logos as well. And this, this ties into the crystal and the new gimmick that's potentially in these new games as well. So we'll touch on that just a minute as well. So this is a symbol obviously in the Japanese logos, always in the Japanese logos, not really in any of the other logos. You always get the new mechanical symbol or the gimmick symbol in their logos um, and this time around we've got this crystal which we don't exactly know what it is yet but if you look back to Sun and Moon you had the Z crystal before that you had the the mega um, symbol as well so they always have that kind of symbology for the gimmick in their logos whereas we never really get it so you can see the crystal here and um, this is very reminiscent of double colorless energy um, and I want to just really point out because a lot of people when they've been kind of linking these two together which makes a lot of sense they're normally in TCG, the double colorless energy is a, a, an energy that's normally related to normal types. So there's that fixation on, well, it has to be uh, normal typing or something in regards to that. But if you look at the, the wording here of this energy, it's colorless energy. So it would refer to energy without any color. Uh, and this goes so well with uh, another theory that, that Soul Silver put out about refraction. And this thread comes off the back of a tweet that Eclipse, another uh, Riddler kind of leaker, uh, put out a, a, a riddle almost about um, refraction here that was uh, solved by Pocoso. Um, and then this goes on to talk about refraction and how these crystals could potentially work in Scarlet and Violet, where if you're using refraction where, you know, the white light goes into a prism and then comes out the other side with colors. The colors obviously are on a spectrum. You've got the whole spectrum being from um, ultraviolet, which is violet, and then you've got infrared, which is scarlet. Uh, so you've got that kind of link tie there. And because you're putting colorless energy or white light into this prism, it can potentially change the type. And that's where the whole type changing kind of theory comes from. But if you think about colorless energy here, makes a lot of sense. It's the white light, the sun, the it kind of goes into this refraction process and by doing this on a Pokemon then it can have an effect. This also ties in to something like in the TCG. We've got Crystal Pokemon were a big thing back in the e-reader series of cards. You can see here that they are a special type of Pokemon. They don't have a typing either so their typing is colorless, normal really uh, as a translation TCG, but we'll call them colorless for this. Um, with the ability whenever you attach an energy card, a specific energy card to them that they require for their attacks, the last energy card that you would attach to them is what their typing becomes for the, the remainder of that turn. So that could be translated into the video game by somehow saying that they have, you know, they become like a crystal type potentially or a normal type or they have other type lists. We've seen Pokemon have uh, no types before, they're typeless. Uh, the move burn up on Arcanine. If used on Arcanine, it takes away its fire typing, so it becomes typeless. So we have seen that in the video game before, so there isn't any reason why this couldn't happen again, meaning that they have no weaknesses at all, so for a set amount of turns. And then whatever attack they decide to use, then they could potentially change into that type for that turn and then go back to the colorless or the, you, you know, no type for the rest of the, the game. I don't know. There, there's a lot to think about here and there's a lot of links back to things that have been used previously. And this links back to things that are past ideas or things that have been maybe scrapped in the past and then being put forward into Scarlet and Violet. And this all stems back to the initial leaks that we got from the Chinese uncle, uh, which a lot of it has actually come to fruition now. But one of the big things that I wanted to mention in this video, specifically against the crystal argument, is Scarlet and Violet will be pulling heavily from old scrapped ideas, uh, old and scrapped ideas so this really rings true with the crystal pokemon it's an old idea it's maybe something that was scrapped when they tried to bring it into the video game somehow and they're bringing it back for scarlet and violet so the, just this one line makes a lot of sense for why this could tie in so uh, just some interesting thoughts there but would love to hear your opinion on on these 
crystal forms and whether or not you think there's going to be a, a tie-in to the new gimmick being related to these crystal pokemon that were around so long ago in in the tcg i think it's 2003 let me have a look i've got a, i've got an e-reader card right here because i have them on display 2002 2003 was around the era of e-reader card so that's a very long time ago but it, it doesn't matter that it's that long ago they could think now okay we can incorporate it into the games and use it somehow so let me know down in the the comments below what your thoughts are on this would love to hear like i've said and we'll get on to our next uh, topic which is going to be about the region name so we have had two trailers so far official trailers and we still don't know the region name for where scarlet and violet is going to be based uh, it is theoried with the run-up to potential Nintendo Direct coming out mm, on the 28th or 29th of June, potentially. It's all up in the end, nothing confirmed yet, uh, so that could change and it could be completely different. But that's what people are thinking right now, that we are going to get the reveal of the new region announced around the same time. And this goes back to something that was put together from again soul silver um where we've got mark moore's here going through from their tweet saying about these release shorts from the uh, pokemon official uh, channel where you can go on here and you can see uh where they've got visit kanto visit johto visit horn sino uh we go right up to yanova uh, Kalos and I think the last one was Alola so we're, we're due the Galar one next week and then the week after that should be the uh, visit wherever Scarlet and Violet is and that's what everyone's theorying here so you can see that the 22nd of June is going to be Galar 15th was Alola we've just went through them on the shorts on the YouTube channel the official Pokemon one so you would think if we're going by that logic it would be the 29th would be when we get the Scarlet and Violet announcement or maybe the 28th depending on time zones uh, where we should get it announced and this kind of ties in true because they did the same thing leading up to announcing Galar on on their Pokemon YouTube channel where they they went through visit Kanto, Johto, all the regions and then they announced uh, Galar at the end as a big thing so we got the name that way so it would make sense that they're doing the same thing again so on the 28th, 29th, we should get the name of the new region, which is very exciting. So, um, and that ties into potentially more news coming out in the Pokemon Direct. It also ties into a lot of the things that Ku's been leaking out recently, uh, suggests that we're kind of due a lot more news and he's wanting to get things out before the official trailers are dropped because obviously if you are making announcements or anything at the Pokemon Direct, you've got to have uh, that footage submitted prior to time so potentially coup uh, or other people that he gets his information off will know what is coming in those trailers so let's get our information out soon and it would make sense with the the swamp of information that we've had recently so like i say always interesting to say nothing's confirmed these are all just theories at the minute but things to potentially look forward to um of us getting more news in the in the coming weeks so as as always if we do as soon as anything drops we will cover it here on the channel and then the other thing that we'll talk about today is atu another league analyst has some incredible ideas definitely give all these guys a follow um but he goes on to talk about pony and this is something that has been discussed quite a lot the new pikachu like uh, a rodent as usual but it's very uh, close to pikachu and its colors let imagination and inspiration for gorichu so gorichu for those of you that don't know is a kind of concept mon that was scrapped in generation one for an evolution of Raichu, uh, an evolution thought for Raichu in the first generation's Pokemon, but there was never really anything kind of coming of this. This is fan art here of Gorichu, looks very cool. Uh, the only official artwork I think we got was uh, put up by Six uh, Detmar, uh, and this was the only official kind of uh, artwork that we got, and it was just the the, re the reverse, so the, the the back of the evolution. We never actually got to see what the, the full Pokemon looked like, but this is concept art of what it could potentially look like. And now a lot of theories are pointing towards Pormi 
evolving into the the Gorichu as well so that would make a lot of sense it would be big fan service as well and a big tie to something like the the Chinese uncle leak that we also mentioned earlier kind of pulling heavily from old and scrapped ideas as well so that makes a lot of sense be interesting to see if this does happen I would be really really happy if this happened it was the one Pokemon I remember when I played Gen 1 thinking about it you know those those years later when you we found out about these these scrapped ideas because there's a bunch of them from gen 1 some of them got taken into gen 2 but some of them nothing came of at all this is always one that you know myself and especially my brother were like I wish this happened this would have been really cool making a really badass Raichu and hopefully this could actually come come into play now obviously not having the connection with Pikachu Raichu which I don't think is a bad thing but to get Gorichu finally would be a very big shout out to the uh, the Gen 1 fans as well okay so the last thing we're going to end off with today is just something else that Ku put out uh, in his bunch of information that he dropped over the weekend was this little snippet that I didn't feel like it fit into the last video but it feels like a nice thing to wrap the video up with he does say by the way battle wise grass is the strongest because of its god hidden ability but i haven't seen the move pool yet so who knows and Ku is referring specifically to Sprigatito and its final evolution here. So it has a very good hidden ability that makes it extremely powerful. So I'll leave that. We don't know anything further than that yet, but this is very exciting to know that the starters are going to have hidden abilities and they're going to be good as well. Hopefully the other two have really good respective competitive uh, abilities as well, but the hidden ability on the Sprigatito final evolution is going to be good so hopefully it's not too long before we can access that it's normally a little while before we get the hidden abilities on the start of Pokemon but maybe they change that up in Scarlet and Violet and maybe have some better ways for us to get access to those hidden abilities early on but you got to presume it'll probably be some sort of home compatibility uh, gift that they do they've been kind of doing that a lot with their uh, Pokemon home when they do these updates so Maybe that's what we'll get with the Scarlet and Violet update as well. So that's where we're going to end it today, friends. We covered a lot in today's video. I hope you found it all interesting. Uh, definitely check out all of the uh, leak analysts over on Twitter. If you are interested in this, drop them a follow because their content is you know they put a lot of effort into it it's very engaging very interesting and uh, I really enjoy uh, going through it all and kind of putting my own take on things that they're talking about as well and um, obviously covering things as they come up so I hope you've enjoyed today's video thank you so much for tuning in friends have a great rest of your day if you've enjoyed the video do drop a like on it really appreciate it, it helps the video out massively um, sub to the channel as well if you want to keep up to date with all of these leaks and rumors as they're coming out and uh, I'll catch you all in the next video so until then take care and bye bye